alligator? Could you uh, hand me my treasure block? Thank you very much. Hey everybody, Roy Rogers here.
Is there sound now? Okay. Is there sound now, J folks? Let me take a look in the chat. I thought everything was good. Cool. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now, everybody? Uh, can you hear me now? Is that better? Uh, quiet, but yes. How about now? Is that is that better? Is that better? So this is the fun thing of me doing all the technical stuff on my end. Cool. Awesome. All right. So let me go back to uh, what I was saying, uh, apparently into the void, which was that this is a uh, pretty bad matchup for John God, uh, despite the fact that I think that Aaron Groth uh, on the right here is playing uh, of the probably the ideal version of it. But he not having a military icon and giving that free challenge away to the Stark Crossing opponent is really, really dangerous because Stark Crossing does not give you uh, a lot of time to to find your pieces. And hitting Aaron, while he's not necessarily as vital as many people who don't have a lot of experience playing Drown God might have, he uh, definitely gives you an out to sort of... It gives you a second combo condition if you can't see Charl, but he's currently dead. And you actually don't have in Drowned God that many ways to get your unique characters out of the dead pile. So it's a big setback, particularly since I don't see Charl in Aaron's hand. Uh, and here comes Matt swinging in for, I'm assuming, uh, his third challenge. Because he needs to go over uh, uh, Aaron's sizable defense. Double checking. All right, so let's see. Got the stream chat open now. All right. Okay, so that's just a basic defense to uh, slow the power grab down a little bit, but I still think that Matt should, yep, he gets the superior claim there that he can still get off. That's a huge power gain. So that's two from his superior claim, one from crossing, but no, oh, don't take your power claim yet. Yeah, no power claim. Good, good, Matt. Good, uh, good there. Okay, passes it over to Aaron, who's probably swinging in for a power challenge here. And trigger to get Aaron. Nice with the old wick, uh, which he will be able to now win by five or more and return Aaron to his hand. Get a power. Uh, and there we go. And the combo chain gets a little bit started. And I do. I very much appreciate um, Aaron's play there of clearly denoting where he, uh, where the triggers are coming from, rather than just uh, resolving them. It makes sort of not everybody is used to playing against Drown God, and it makes it just a lot easier to keep the board state clean and make sure that players on both uh, sides uh, know what's going on. Yes, I am not at U.S. Nationals. Uh, uh, it, sadly, I could not afford to do it. I can only really afford to go to Worlds or uh, or Nats as much as I want to support my good friend Will Lentz, who is running uh, U.S. Nationals and living his dream right now as having organized U.S. Nationals. Uh, my good friend uh, Wama from England won uh, Euros, and I would like to see Wama, who I only get to see when he's uh, on, in the U.S. And uh, I, luckily, since Will lives in the U.S. I get to see him and Kristen on a more regular basis, so I'm going to Worlds this year, not to U.S. Nats. All right, and now we got Aaron Groth, who playing uh, Uneasy Truce, which is a new plot from the last chapter pack that uh, means that power can only has two things. Uh, first, it has uh, power can only be claimed uh, for your faction card, not on characters, but for your faction card during challenges. And the second uh, text of it is a force reaction that in order to initiate a challenge, you have to give your opponent a power. Uh, this is, and that's, it's symmetrical, so even though it's Aaron's plot, uh, both he and Matt have to have to follow it. Uh, this is a huge answer for slow decks like uh, Drown God, combo decks like Drown God or, or Tyrell Wars, that to sort of give them breathing space against these hyper, hyper fast uh, crossing decks that are coming to dominate the meta. And uh, Matt flipped uh, Breaking Ties, which is pretty good actually, because a lot of the combo pieces for such as Aaron, such as the Drow Disciple, they are non-loyal, so that gives uh, Matt the opportunity to pop them back and prevent uh, Aaron from claiming a lot of power on them. So I actually, I really like uh, Matt's plot sequencing here. Uh, this sort of, uh, he's going to have to take this turn off anyway, and he has the tools to stop uh, 
to stop Aaron from being able to uh, to go off on this turn. So the question is, uh, does he here pop it? No, he's going to wait until pa priority slash turn probably is passed over to uh, to Matt, back over to himself. So this is turn is going to end up being, I think, a little bit of a wash. So with Matt at 4-5 power, and Aaron also probably having to take a turn off from really going crazy, uh, I think that actually ends up favoring Matt uh, over favoring uh, over uh, over Aaron. Uh, although Aaron does have a good number of combo pieces here. Oh, he is going to go. He's going to play a drawn disciple. Okay, I would have really liked with the breaking ties out to him have played the um, the Nagas ribs that's in his hand, uh, which will just really just speed up the consistency that he's almost got all the pieces he needs to close the game out. Uh, but he uh, he's just a little bit short not seeing Tarl there, so having more tools to be able to uh, to do that would be really great. Hmm. Okay, Summer. Summer's great. Oh, Summer's great to see on a Breaking Ties turn, but I don't think he has any valid targets right now in Matt's discard or uh, dead pile. Uh, yes, uh, Aaron's opponent is Matt Jenkins, and it is on Jousting Pavilion, I believe. All right. So, all right, no Breaking Ties trigger. Uh, did Aaron pass challenges? I think he either passed challenges or first action in the challenges phase. So, yep, Matt's going to draw a card. Well, reveal card. Nope, it's uh, King's Road, the bane of all Stark players since the core set. Uh, Aaron, so Matt's, I think gotta trigger his breaking ties here you want to get Aaron away uh, Aaron from Aaron Aaron from Aaron there we go uh, here so that particularly before you move into dominance because uh, it's gonna be a big issue for him because uh, he can start cycling oh no I guess he has no nothing in his dead pile and oh no but he has the event but he doesn't have any gold right because he only has one gold so mm, yeah I don't really think that Aaron I'm not super happy, to be honest with you, with how Groth uh, played this turn. I think he didn't. I think he he didn't really use it to the best of his advantage, particularly with breaking ties. There, I think he should have spent a little bit more time building up his board and getting ready for a really big, uh, big turn, like doing something like uh, killing the drowned disciple with what? Okay, uh, killing the drowned disciple. That was an interesting return to hand. Um, Probably picking the most expensive character. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure with that. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Okay. So uh, that was the, oh god, what are they called? The, the four drops uh, drown something or other? I can't, I can't remember what the four drop is. But it's returned. Uh, I believe uh, Aaron wins dominance. And we are good to go into the next plot phase. So what is Aaron going to flip here? What does he need? He needs to see Tarl since he has, and he needs a decent amount of gold. He's got a good economy base, so he should be able to trigger all of his pieces uh, if he gets them, but okay, building orders, okay, good. Political disaster, okay. That really is useful because it gives uh, it forces Aaron into the choice of whether he wants to blow up his very solid economy uh, or keep his uh, combo enablers in the form of Old Wick and uh, uh, Old Wick and uh, Nagas Rips. So good play on Matt's uh, on Matt's part. Um, he's gonna have, but of course, building orders does give him the answer, the ability to go for one of the things that he's missing. So if he tosses like Nagas Rips, for example, he can go and fetch it. He see we see an economy card. We see ribs and we see an iron mines oh no that's old wick uh the the main problem with the Greyjoy uh drown god locations they all look the same which makes it really difficult to identify them uh by just simply the art but yeah that is that's old wick um okay so he's fetching old wick so certain almost certainly old wick is going to uh come into uh come into get chucked to political disaster 
Um, and then what are we going to see him keep beside? Oh, okay. So he's throwing both of his combo locations and keeping his economy. I like that play. Uh, I, uh, I think he has another copy of uh, the ribs in his hand. And he has uh, the old wick that he just got off building orders. So uh, I think a very decision to prioritize his economy over his combo pieces was the really right decision. But he's still missing Tarl, and his dead pile is very, very limited. One of the problems playing Drowned God that you can run into uh, playing against crossing decks is you don't always get characters in your in your dead pile uh, very consistently, unless you're Valoring or triggering the uh, the the draw event on yourself. All right, so let's see. He all right, so he's got the kill event, the kill and draw event. He's got Theon still. Okay, he, so he puts out the ribs, and then what's he gonna do? For what else, I can't. This is the problem. I can't really see his hand. I'm literally turning my head for those of you who are watching it there, trying to trying to see it, even though that literally does nothing. I see a disciple. I see the the four drop that returned to his hand. Okay, economy. He can safely play that now knowing that the political disaster is pinned, and then comes the ribs. Okie doke. And, but he doesn't have anything to return with the ribs short of killing, I think, I think you do kill here. I think you kill one of your, uh, your guys to draw some cards. I mean, you just need to start seeding the dead pile. Nope, he chooses to go with Theon, what, paying two for Theon? Okay, and King Theon. Okay, so he's he's afraid that next turn his opponent is going to go into uh, King Plot. Uh, there is a possibility that he could be running King Plot himself. Um, I don't necessarily know if that's very good in Drowned God uh, because, of course, you don't really necessarily want to consistently see your kings. They're nice to have uh, if you're running the King Attachment or Balon. They're very very nice to have. Um... Oh, what's going on? Okay, so he's saying. Oh, he's saying he didn't have enough money to play that. Yep, okay, cool. Uh, so yeah, I was, again, a little confused that he only played two, but he he's he's sitting there. Okay. So Theon plus uh, a pretty solid board of drowned folks. Alright, so what has Matt got for us here? Matt's board has got three Stark family members, but not a lot. So he's got a lot of, like, decent stuff, but none of the huge, really fast power grabby stuff. The third Sansa, I'm, I'm not really a fan of the triple dupe Sansa there, but uh, I, mean, I don't really see the point. Uh, but, you know, um, it, it, I, I just really don't see the point of that many dupes on, on Sansa. You can use it to protect your hand. Uh, so what do we got here? So we got, he's swinging in, I think for probably a power challenge, um, military challenge, because we got a super dupe Sansa, we got a dupe Catelyn, and we got Arya with a spare dupe, uh, is uh, very, not very appealing to Aaron, I would imagine. So the, the power challenge, particularly unopposed, would be really good. It will actually put them very, uh, will actually put them, put him slightly ahead in the power account. So uh, going into, of course, uh, Matt's challenges face, but I don't, I don't think swinging in for an intrigue really gets him very much here, because um, his opponent can definitely uh, get all three challenges off should he want to. So I think having a defense and making sure since your dead pile is empty that you can win, uh, that you can win dominance is probably more important. Because that ex keeping that extra keeping as much extra power as possible from Matt is really important at this point, particularly because he's now swung the power count temporarily, of course, into his favor. All right, let's see what's while well, they're deciding. Let's see his chat. Yep, Aaron Groff versus Matt Jenkins. Cool. Yep. Uh, so it's uh, what do we got here? Uh, the glare is pretty bad, to be honest with you, on Groth's uh, on Groth's locations. There, uh, hard to see, but I think uh, same with uh, same with Matt's. But Matt's are a little bit easier. He's got the two drop uh, stand economy location and a King's Road. So, what is Matt going to do here? What is Matt going to do here? Because I believe. Uh, Groth passed the action over to him. He just triggered his uh, draw location. Hmm. What? So what could his Matt's hand doesn't look like it has a lot of action in it. Oh nope, he didn't. 
okay, he opposed and the pull out of the, I guess, intrigue challenge there. It's interesting. Okay. Okay, that was the military challenge. Okay. And now, what is Matt's plan? But, hmm. I mean, I think you. I think you just go for it here. Um, you can't really fight dominance too much. I think you just initiate your challenges here. Uh, get get some power on your house. He gets the on, and he gets one trigger there. So he's going to get two power in the in in the in the uh, in the dominance phase there. Okay, so he's swinging in for power block with the disciple. He's doing the dominance math. Good, good, good. Good. All right. Block with the disciple loses a power, so that's uh, one for claim and one for crossing from Matt. And now I believe they're going to go into dominance, which is definitely in Groth's favor. We've got, oh, but there's gold. So there's three. That's a, yeah, Groth wins. He gets Theon back. Is he going to remember his trigger? He does remember his trigger. Puts it on Aaron. Okay. So, all right. Pr that was a pretty good turn, a pretty even turn, all things considered. Uh, the question, and the question is, how much gas does Groth have? I think I think at this point he's gonna want some econ some some to see some cards and to start seeing his discard pile more. So I wouldn't necessarily be surprised to see him maybe wildfire and kill an ex extraneous character or go for the trade routes. Yeah. Now, ooh, Valardo Harris. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, so he gets so Matt gets to keep four six. Uh, nine. He's gonna probably put Osha, I assume, under his deck, and Groth gets to keep uh, six. So Groth's gonna throw Theon and one of the one of the priests under. Okay. Nope. He keeps Theon and puts uh, w one of the priests and the disciple under there. That probably t tells us that he has a disciple in his hand. Uh, let's see. Does he does he have a disciple? He gets a million gold. I mean, he clearly has something, some plan here. He's got the King of Salt of Rock that he w that he tried to illegally play last round. Um, and draw two. He sees a gate stoop. Up oh, there's Tarl. Nice, exactly what you want to see in this spot. Oh, yep. And there's another disciple. Yeah, he's in pretty good spot. He still hasn't found a very good way to uh, see his discard pile or his dead pile. Excuse me but he's definitely pretty close to being able to lock this game up. Uh, so Matt's gonna need to crank the accelerator here a great deal. Okay, so we get our the four drop. Yeah, th with the four drop, he just needs to get one character and he has the draw event. Yep, kill to draw, yep, okay. Kill to draw four. One, two, three, four. Nothing super great, but an economy card. It's solid enough. A dupe, the dupe on Aaron really helps. Uh, yep, an economy card. So now we should see Tarl come. Nope. Okay, that guy comes out. Yep. We should definitely see Tarl come out. We're allowing him to marshal the four. Yep, that first. Yep. Okay. And then marshal the four drop out of the dead pile. Unless he wants to have it sit there. Do you not want... So which will get him more power comes out that's one yep Tarl comes out for four five and then he's in pretty good spot uh, very very good spot uh, he can get in dominance he'll get a single power for dominance 
He'll gain a power from Aaron's trigger uh, through the Drowned Disciple. He will then kill the Drowned Boat, but there's nothing in the dead pile. But Matt has to do a military challenge, so that uh, little iron fishmonger is almost certainly going to be going uh, in to the dead pile. I think, I think you don't want to bring the Drowned Disciple out with Old Wick, but I could be wrong there. Um, it might end up being the same. No, I think you want to keep it in there and, and get what is that? The, the two power um, in the in the in the dominance phase versus because uh, you don't really need with Theon you don't really need uh, the power from uh, the power strength from uh, the the disciple or whatever it's called the uh, fanatic or whatever the the four drop i'm just going to call it the four drop to maintain consistency i can never remember what that card is called um yeah and that's exactly what croft does um ooh, we've got uh that's mage mormont on matt's side a very powerful draw engine and, and a source of renown which is really really what uh matt needs here uh Matt definitely needs that. Uh, Septa Nasiska, Nasissa, I think, is the name. Uh, the Septa, as uh, Dark Nash calls her, uh, gives Arya immune to your opponent's plot effects and an intrigue icon. So, uh, making her very, very powerful. Meaning that Matt's board will do very well against a uh, against a wildfire next turn. But really, at the end of the day. Uh, Groth only really cares about what Wildfire will do for him. Uh, it might allow him to throw an additional character into the dead pile, uh, which will, or two characters into the dead pile, which will allow him, of course, to claim power with his disciple. All right, so Matt's doing math, I assume, because I believe Groth passed uh, past action over to him. Let me check on the stream here. Okay, so it's good. All right. Grothy passes action, reveals, gets Hodor. Very nice, very nice. But Hodor is not going to really do much in here. So we get the military challenge. So that's two power, one for unopposed, one for renown. Which puts Matt at, what, four, seven, eight. Kill there, yep, which he's going to need for his combo uh, power in the next turn. Puts him at eight. Uh, so the question now is, I think you just do the Intrigue Challenge with the Septa. Because um, you can't, with two dead characters in there, I don't think you can stop Groff from winning Dominance. So you want to get as much power on your house card as possible. And he defends. Uh, three to three, he gets a card. Hopefully uh, something good. Uh, the crown, the crown's pretty good actually, um, because that uh, means that uh, Matt can swap, can switch into uh, King of the North and next turn and turn off a lot of the nonsense that Groth has, because uh, he has no King Balon and now he's lost his uh, King of uh, Salt and Rock. All right, and he just does a pretty big power challenge here. I think you do maybe. Aria plus just Aria plus someone should be enough to go over because um, he can defend with six if you stealth uh, stealth what's his name uh, stealth Tarl or I mean I don't think it's in Matt's interest to try to win Dom here uh, I know because I don't even think he can so that's because uh, that's four for dominance so seven ten fourteen currently standing to Matt's uh, four, eight, twelve. Yeah, so he's gonna need to to just do challenges here. Uh, I don't think it really matters. He could just he could just team swing. Um, just make sure that you can go over the uh, six defense that Aaron can 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 marshal here. But Matt is in a lot of trouble. He did not have explosive enough start or disruptive enough start to really. Uh, stop Groth from being able to go go to town. He m might next turn be able to play King in the North excuse me and uh, and really go to town uh, without having to worry about Groth doing any tricks. 
uh, because I'll, right now all of his uh, tricks on board, Catelyn, the Renown on uh, Mage, uh, Septa, and Arya's Stealth do not get turned off by King of the North because they're non-triggered effects. So he currently has a much better board for King of the North. So that's what probably I think Matt should do next turn, um, unless he has some way that he can maybe win for, go first, uh, win with Clash of Kings. But I also I don't think that that's quite possible. But it, it could be um, math is hard. Um, all right. So what is Matt thinking about here? Not entirely sure. Does he want to? I mean, he can just do the sick. Yeah, you just go. Yep, stealth, tarl. I assume. Yep, so he does the the what? That's six, ten strength power challenge to six possible defenders, um, which means of which of course signals that he doesn't have the uh, doesn't have a superior claim. So Groth is just probably gonna oppose with one of his dudes and then start doing his combo leaning off in the challenge in the dominance phase, excuse me. Four drop equals a possible. Thank you very much, Swing Junkie. Uh, they all have such interchangeable names. Uh, right. So yeah, he's gonna. Did, oh, he didn't defend. He didn't stealth Taro. Stealth somebody. Nope. Okay. I guess he. Okay. Defend for seven. All right. Still fine. For Matt. Still fine. Groth looks very satisfied with himself, but I still think Matt wins this challenge, right? If it's the crossing challenge. 10 to 7. Nope. So he gets his crossing and he gets his claim. Yeah, Groth doesn't need to move that power very far from his house card. Uh, 4, 7, 9. Uh, why did Sansa get power? I'm not 100 percent sure. Does she have something? Oh, she got she gets renowned. That's right. Oh, and the plus two strength from Septa. Got to remember that. And standing her up. Uh, okay, okay. I always forget about that. I, it's only been recently that you really start seeing Sansa in challenges. Oh, and he wins Dom now. That's really ooh spicy. Why did yeah? I wonder why Groth. I guess he was afraid of the superior claim because of the plus two strength from Sansa. It all makes sense now. Um, I still think probably Groth should have eaten the superior claim. Okay, so he's switching into uh, you win or you die, which of course its drawback is not much of a drawback thanks to um, uh, the fact that all of your characters that are in your hand uh, will end up in your dead pile rather than in your discard pile. Seeding your discard pile and uh, allowing you to uh, win Dominus much more consistently. So Groth, hmm. That, I, I'm not 100% on that double block there uh, on Aaron's part. Uh, partic with, with Sansa's strength bump, um, once he didn't go in with uh, Catelyn, I think that signals to me that he doesn't have the superior claim. And he, of course, doesn't have the superior claim. Uh, but that's commentator. That's, that, that's some booth bias right there. Uh, let's see. What's Groth got here? Nothing interesting. Matt just going to play stuff onto the board. Oof. Oof. Yeah. So we've got some uh, Mormont action going on here, Mage and uh, her daughter, uh, both with Renown, but of course, uh, Daisy Mormont's uh, X there in her strength uh, shield means that she gets plus one strength or has one strength for each Stark character you control. Uh, with that Renown, she can just really get out of control in these uh, in these Stark decks with Sansa having Renown. So there's now three instances of Renown on the board. Matt is very much in striking distance of closing. I don't know if Groth can do it. 
Um, does he have the draw? Um, let's see. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine power with one currently dead character. Uh, hmm. Unless there's a power hiding under under Iron, he has four power on him. Uh, so Matt swings for a mill challenge, and that's that's the win. All right. So I I actually, honest to goodness, think that Groff probably should have won dominance. Oh, they're not doing the pickup, even though that was a concede. One for unopposed, and two on the and two on the power there. Yep. Good play on uh, Matt's end. Groff just wasn't quite able to combo him down. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if Groff's line in the last last round was the right one. Um, I think he could have been two power up if he had been less, aggr uh, less aggressive with uh, the um, with his defense. Of, uh, and I don't think a p playing around superior claim like that was probably the right call. But of course, that is just the bias of someone sitting here in the booth, not at the table. Uh, but that's a pretty good first round. Uh, Drown God is down, so the great monster, the great degenerate monster uh, that people hate, Drown God, is down on the first round with Matt Jenkins up a game playing Stark Crossing. Good on both of them. Well played on both of their parts. A uh, nice bag uh, as well for Aaron Groth. And uh, we're going to be moving into the second round in a little bit. Uh, let me know if you're in the chat whether or not um, you think that... Oh, they missed. Yep, the armory does not stand. They both missed that. Um, I don't think that that impacted the game, but uh could be wrong. I think... Uh, so Dred Jesse won with Drown God, but it's not dead yet. Yes, and of course, uh, I believe that they're cutting uh, that all four and twos make it. Uh, Groff has plenty of chances to uh, to make it into the cut. It's uh, so of course only the first round, um, and that was a very close game. And Stark Crossing, of course, is one of the bad matchups for Drown God. So if you are afraid of Drown God in your local meta game, you should definitely be playing Stark Crossing. Uh, Yep, military hole definitely did cost him the game. Uh, CML seventy six. Uh, that's a a classic problem that you can uh, run into with um, with Stark against Stark or uh, playing uh, Drown God. Uh, so that you also have the option of whether or not it was the right decision for him to be doing those power challenges with Theon rather than just opposing uh, Matt uh, with Theon's military I icon. And we are joined, of course, by uh, CT here. Uh, to uh, as who's one of course Groth's best friends uh, to probably decompress about the round. Um, I am going to take a quick break uh, to uh, make sure that all of the uh, technical stuff is sorted out and I hope you guys have been enjoying the commentary so far. Let me know uh, what you what you think uh, in the chat or in the uh, in the Facebook thread. So I will be back in a minute. I also am going to get some more water uh, as well because my voice is already parched from st talking nonstop for about thirty five minutes. So we will be back uh, after a word from no sponsors.
from Meta Games Unlimited in Springfield, Missouri uh, for U.S. Nationals. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Continue to enjoy Matt Clemens' Man Candy.
he'll be able to uh, put him on. So apparently there was uh, no audio, so all of my awesome commentary that I was just doing went nowhere. But anyway, uh, am I, is the audio back? Um, is the audio back now? Uh, so we got Andros versus Will, all of my analysis that I just did. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, so cool uh so i'm back i apologize guys so uh my point was this uh will is uh, well pretty screwed now um actually but thanks to the will uh excuse me not the will the wyman and uh uh rob combo being active on the first turn um i mean it does open andras to a valor uh but of course uh because will's got mostly chuds out but um he he may not will may not be running Valor. He could be running Valor and Harris, which will of course also mess with uh, Andras's game plan. But I am not entirely sure that will will uh, if he's not running Valor and Margulis, will's in a little bit of trouble here uh, because there's a huge value action machine coming uh, his way from Andras. Okay, Arya. That's another thing that will is going to be really sad to see here. Uh, I wanted to make a couple of quick notes here before they really get going. Um, I think that in general, uh, Stark Crossing is a bad matchup for Tyrell Wars. Uh, it looks like based on the way Will's deck is built, the fact that when he was shuffling up, we saw him shuffle um, in a, uh, a Lord Renly's Ride, which says that he's running a more uh, challenge-focused version than the more combo-focused version uh, that, uh, that people like the Long Lances uh, brought to uh, Gen Con. Uh, so he does have a much better matchup against uh, Stark Crossing than a more mace-focused one. Uh, but of course, he has way less outs than the mace does, uh, the mace versions do. Because the mace versions, if you can get a mace uh, online early, there's not a lot that Stark Crossing can do to interact with that. Uh, but of course, uh, Will is priding probably consistency in the Stark matchup versus just the ability to blow them out. Uh, which is probably the right call in this meta, considering how popular Stark Crossing has been since its second place finish at Gen Con. Uh, Andras has a very solid board, uh, a little bit less vulnerable to uh, Valor now that Arya is out there. Uh, Will does that Intrigue Challenge. Andras chooses not to uh, to defend it and loses a Econ card. Now let's see what Will's got for him next. Probably not a lot. Uh, here, uh, but okay. Oh, he's going for the I am no one uh, tricks on Aria. Uh, so what are we going to get here? I am no one is a really powerful card pushed over the edge, uh, which is one of the cards along with Wyman Manderly that's pushed these Stark decks uh, over the edge. All right, so Wyman's probably coming in for either a power intrigue uh, challenge. Uh, well, Will's got power on his house, so the power challenge is a little bit more valuable than it is first turn, but it was an intrigue challenge. Uh, he defends with uh, the informant. What is Will saving that three gold for? We haven't seen any ambush here. Okay, what's he going to get? He gets... All right, that's not the end of the world, although losing that three, he was, I'm assuming, planning to use that on the power challenge to defend the power challenge, and then we've got the stealth here on um, power... Um, oh, okay. Who's coming out? Does he have another one of the... Yep, he does have another one of the uh, Pump Girls, the Hightower Spies. Uh, triggers, yep. Reveal. Ooh, Renly! That is super nice to see, particularly with that old town in play uh, and defend. Did he pump herself? I assume, yep, he pumped her to defend. Yep, she can target herself, Andras. Uh, very. That's one of the great things to do. Uh, wow, that was that's a really really nice play for Will. Um, so he targeted. Okay, they're cleaning up where who he targeted with that, um, and then he I believe will win that challenge because um, it was a power challenge because Arya doesn't have a military icon because she was blanked, um, and now Rob comes in for the military challenge, stealthy or uh, stealthy. Wait, why is I am no one, right? So I'm... Oh, 
I am no one. Let me just make sure that I'm remembering what I am no one does. God, second edition. Whoop, whoop, whoop. They gain. Yeah, loses all factions really and traits. Oh no, she keeps her. She keeps her text box. For some reason, I thought it blanked the text box. Um, I don't know why, but I did. Uh, all right, so she gets uh, that unopposed military challenge through, and he chooses to block to trigger there, draw a card, gain gold. And then, oof, blowing up the high tower. Okay, that's pretty good for him. Or excuse me, not high tower, old town. That's very good for Andros. That's an interesting piece of tech that he's got there. It certainly will help him in some of his bad matchups, particularly like against Martell or Targaryen. Um, hitting a lot of their value locations will be really good. All right, so where are we sitting here? Okay, he kills uh, an informant. Uh, and Andros gets his power. So it's even one, two, or two to two, well, three now with uh, remembering his Rob uh, Renown there. Good. And his draw from Arya's I am a no one. All right. So Will wins dominance, I believe. Three, well, plus the uh, additional gold from. Uh, uh, the Septon. So it's three to two going into round two. So this is going to be a pretty critical round. Um, the question is, uh, is Will going to Valor? Is he going to Doher Valor Margulis? Is he going to Valor Doharis? Um, which resets is he running? Because the, the value town of Rob and Wyman are up and running. Will, I don't believe, looking at his hand, has a milk, which he really needs to, to sort of control Wyman here. Rob is really vulnerable uh, to a uh, to, to, to a reset because there's no dupe on him. Wyman has no dupe. So, I mean, this could be a good... I mean, Will's board is kind of crappy. There's no valuable characters. He's got uh, Renly to play on a future turn. Of course, losing Old Town does suck, but he's, uh, he's in a pretty good good spot if he can get the value town of Rob and Wyman under control. Uh, so let's see. Now Andros probably here wants to figure out something that's going to give him options if he does get reset. So the question, this could be something like heads on spikes, which will let him control the initiative and maybe get that readily out of his opponent's hand. Uh, or an economy plot that will allow him to sort of reflood. Uh, he has less power than Will, so if he does something like close call into a Valor Margulis, he can go first, trigger the Valor Margulis, uh, and pull uh, one of his important characters out. Uh, I'm not entirely... I don't think you would do something like Force March tier. Uh, so the question is, uh, what is going to give Andras the most options should Will choose to reset him here? Um, I think... I do think Will might need to reset here. I mean, I... That's what I would probably do. It's just like, it's a juicy target. Nope. Late Summer Feast into a uh, time of plenty. Okay. So Will's basically saying that, oh, and with the additional, they tie for initiative, but Will has, uh, oh, they have the same amount of power, excuse me, because of the power on Rob. So they're going to flip a coin. Uh, okay. So I don't, I didn't see who won that. Uh, so what we've got here then is Will is basically saying the value of the cards in my hand can equal the value of uh, what you have in play. I am not convinced by that uh, entirely. I think that Brenly is good, but I don't know if he can compete with the value town that is about to about to come at you with the action economy and eventual card advantage of Wyman combined with Rob. But um, Will could have, I mean, Will with no other economy besides that King's Road. So he has uh, nine resource, nine gold plus three additional resources in the form of the King's Road plus the Caretaker. So that's, uh, so that's four additional resources that he has in the form of non-gold things. So who's coming out? Probably Renly? I mean, he could do something like play Renly here hope that uh, his opponent doesn't have any good answers to Renly and then go into King Plot. Uh, but a lot, of course, a lot of the Star Crossing decks are running um, 
what's that card? The Wolf King. There we go. Uh, but I, I haven't seen Andras uh, have that. Oh, no, I think he may have had that in our game uh, at in New Jersey. Um, let's see what we got here. Okay, the dupe on Renly is really nice. Uh, it's It sets him up for... Uh, for a reset of his own, um, if he ha if he's running Valor Margulis, let's see. So Will has uh, the problem with the stack. There is it's difficult to read how much gold he has. I think it's four. Okay, he plays the Septon that he uh, redrew the the previous round. Okay, and Andras has uh, six seven gold available. All right, what's he got here? Did, did he get any dupes for his big boys? I don't think he did. So with a dupe on Renly, that makes reset incoming being even more likely uh, from Will. OK, so Andras plays the economy and with the stand. Uh, Stands very powerful. OK, dupe on Arya means that if, he does, if the Margulis does come down, uh, Arya will still be online, and it, do you see that he's running the Mirando? As a former Brotherhood guy, he's running the Mirando version of Arya, alongside the Corset, just to drive people like Sid crazy. Uh, let's see, what else we got here? Got anything else for us, Andras? We got, I see a Sansa. I see, what else? Okay, nothing. Okay, oh, no, he's got something, something unique. Is this Sansa for free, or does he have another big character with his four? Oh, he's got Eddard. Okay, is he playing Eddard here? Yep, Eddard comes down. That's a lot of power. That's a lot of power. Now, of course, uh, the other dupe on uh, Arya also gives uh, him the ability to, gives Andras the ability to lose the power challenge, excuse me, the military challenge, and not have to uh, kill his uh, steward, so that his steward uh, can be used for the Wyman trigger to get a big swing uh, with Rob and uh, Eddard twice. But the question is, can that power survive? Okay, so we got an intrigue challenge. Comment at Andras for two from Will with that Old Town Septon, or scheming, not Old Town Septon, Scheming Septon. All right, so Will's got, don't think Will has any events in his hand. It's hard to see. Uh, so this might be a turn that we're playing honestly on the board. Is he going to block? I don't think blocking makes a huge amount of sense for Andras here. Um, unless there's something super vital in his hand, but I feel like his hand had some chafe chafe chaff uh, in his uh, available to him all right so he, oh this is a power challenge not an intrigue challenge okay interesting I huh it's a block 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 interesting 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 so we've got that's a big power gain there I'm not entirely sure why will did that power challenge there um, He's going to, yep, swing that guy back into his deck to draw a card and gain some gold. Uh, I'm hmm, I'm not entirely convinced that that was the right play for Will with the amount of stand, yep. And then draw. Then he's going to trigger there. He's going to draw a card. React there, yep. And so that gave two power to Andras for not a lot of gain on Will's part. I mean, uh, may, be, particularly because um, with that stand location, uh, there could be more uh, more challenges coming uh, Will's way, even though the uh, Rob trigger is burnt. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, Will's in a bit of a tough spot here. If his first challenge was power, yes, chat. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not convinced that that was entirely the right play. 
Um, I think an intrigue challenge probably would have been a little bit better for Will there. I just assumed it was, but it looks like Will passed uh, actions to Andros. So Andros has to decide what is the best way for him to do this. I think he's going to do an intrigue challenge and try to bait a Renly use here. Um, maybe Will maybe Will has a growing strong uh, here to help, or maybe he has his third uh, high tower spy, which I don't see in his hand. Neither Will or Andros is being very stream friendly with the way they're holding their hands. Okay, I definitely I see uh, the course at night of flowers in there, but not a lot else. All right. What do we got? Andros is thinking maybe the act, maybe the priority is still on Will. Uh, that action is still on Will. I see a crown. Uh, but no. Hmm. I don't. I don't see. I don't see a lot of outs for Will here. Um, he's are uh, his he's in a tough spot he doesn't really have enough beef to push past the the stark family uh with the with the backup of wyman um if he has margulis he, he could be in a decent spot okay he's blocking that intrigue does i don't think that andras has any way to sort of make it make will pay for that that's a good block he's gonna trigger there well the, yep he gets his card and he get and will gets a, uh, a power and a card let's see is it loyal he reveals the I believe uh, the informant to draw an additional card all right that was a good intrigue challenge for will uh, I think but I do think Andres made the right call by burning uh, Wyman into Renly um, and Will made the right decision to defend because he's going to be locked out of the power challenge uh, and I believe the military challenge can go over him so um, she's going power block uh, power or is it mill? It's mill. It's got to be mill, right? Mill stealth there, yep I don't think Will there's not a lot of uh, ambush tricks for military challenges from Tyrell. So this is probably going to be unopposed as well. Yep. And then probably a big power swing from Andras. So Andras is at six, seven. Well, Will is going to need to reset next turn. All right, trigger there. Oh, that was claim. Okay, claim. Interesting that he's keeping the he's keeping the one drop. That probably tells me that he is going to be Valodo Harrison next turn. Big power swing uh, for, uh, what is that? Eight plus uh, six is 14. Block there for six. No reactions. He gets power. Move to claim. Will loses a power. And we've got power on Rob, power on Eddard, and a second power on Rob from Eddard's reaction. All right. So dominance will be Will's. Nope. It'll be a push. Because they both, I believe, have a power. Nope, he's pointing to him. Nope, push. Unless Will's got two power uh, in coin form. It's hard to tell with these stacks of gold. Um, it's still going to be... Okay, so let's do the options here. Margulis is much more of a blowout for, for, for Will. Uh, he has the... But there's no king in play, so uh, Renly is safe. He has a bodyguard that will also protect him coming into claim. Rob is dead, Eddard is dead, and Wyman is dead at that point. And no deck runs three close calls. 
So uh, will excuse me, um, Andros will be stuck with just a, an Arya. Uh, if he Valor Morghulis is here, or excuse me, Valor Harris is here, um, he gets rid of Eddard with two power and Wyman most likely, but Rob still has, what is that, five power on him? With an additional five power on his opponent's house card? Like, it's it's still, it's that's not good for him. So it has to be Margulis here. My hope is, seeing those bodyguards, that Will is running Margulis. Uh, I mean, you can get a lot of, um, Tyrell can run two resets. Uh, I think Jake Platt is in chat and knows that very well. Uh, I, and if Will's in a challenges-focused version of Tyrell Wars, I would not be surprised to see him running two resets. Uh, but that second reset, of course, could be for Snow, which, of course, would be bad for him here. So uh, what do we do? What do we do? I really, really hope that Will has Valor Morghulis. Uh, but if he doesn't, I don't think he can come back from uh, from from where he is. Uh, he owes a bunch of cards to Andras. I mean, we've basically seen a pretty classic uh, version of uh, Stark Crossing versus uh, Tyrell Wars. Uh, Stark Crossing has the tools to get out way ahead. Will is running a, uh, a more challenges-based approach, but of course he hasn't seen any of his challenges tools. He also hasn't seen a lot of economy, which means that his he has a very solid hand. He has... Um, Loris, who's really good in this matchup. He has the Crown, which is really good in this matchup. He had the Pump Girls. One got pulled for Intrigue tra Claim, but that's okay uh, because you have Flea Bottom. So the fact that he has very little of, Star of Tyrell's Amazing Economy and no Flea Bottom has really crimped him. He hasn't seen his events package. So it's been a, and no Milks. Hopefully, Will's running Milks. Uh, Tyrell Wars really needs Milks in this meta because of things like Wyman that can just run away with games uh, or, or Rob. Uh, so. I don't know. Hopefully we see the Margulis come down here, but I'm, I have a feeling that it's Doe Harris. Nope, it's Margulis! Okay, Will is very much in this game. Uh, very, very much in this game then. Okay, that is a big hit uh, for, for Andras. Three of his most important characters in the deck are dead. Uh, well, oh, okay, and he's going to kneel there so that Renly is shut down, but of course... Renly uh, will be protected by the bodyguard in Will's hand, and then hope and Will hopefully can has something else that he can play that will allow him to stay in it. So we have Arya there. Oh, Arya's got both of her icons. So does Andra? So Andras has uh, five economy plus a great hall available to him. Um, Will drew those economy cards I was talking about in between rounds, but they're not going to do him a lot of good here. I think he needs to play the bodyguard plus something else. So the question is, okay, he's got a, he's got a rose garden, so that should definitely probably come out unless he has superior economy in some form. Um, is that another Renly dupe or is that Mace that's in there? So we definitely, okay, we see that come out. Yeah, he's not. Reduce, kneel. Oh, I like how he just kneel. He does kneel it before just immediately taking the discard pile. Okay, she comes out. Yep, you want left or right, I assume. Hopefully, he, or may, uh, well, Colin's dead. Uh, maybe, I mean, the uh, ambush girls would be fine too. Uh, the informants, excuse me. So Got to stop using my uh, informal talk about what they are. Uh, the informants would also be pretty good. Um, Okay, he sees an, I see an informant, and I think that's the only two-cost character in there. Yep, so he's going to pull an informant. That is really good for him, because that uh, protects him from claim as well. He doesn't need the bodyguard uh, to go on Renly then. He'll still have two characters uh, in play if he chooses to do that. Or he can just bodyguard Renly up here and... Uh, you know, eat that bodyguard because it's almost certain that his op uh, his opponent at Plain Start Crossing does not have uh, does not have um, a, a Valor Margulis. It, at most, uh, I've seen Start Crossing list running Doharis, but I haven't seen them running Margulis. Uh, I don't know if Stark has enough consistency in its saves besides dupes for that, but. All right, so here we are. Okay, he could also. So is he gonna? You know, he's gonna play the. Okay, 
Oh, which is pretty good because it means he's going to see an additional card. Uh, he can defend an additional challenge as well. But Andros has a lot of money himself. So, But what biggie, unique characters does he have to play? That's really the question of the day. With Rob and Wyman taken out for good, sitting in the dead pile, in the dead pile. So chat, Ebri is in here talking about that he probably should have one here. Okay, yeah, you should have saved one of those guys to win Dom. Andres would have won here, I think. Use Northern Armory to use Edder one more time. Then use Wyman to sack Arnold to win Dom. Yep, then he's at 15. Yes, I do believe that is correct, um, Ebri. Um, draw girl, Sansa. And do we, does he have the Septa? No. Oh, Ward. Oof. Oh, he's running Ward. Really interesting decision um, in a crossing list. So this is a little bit of a, a heavier crossing list um, from Andras. That's a big, big get Uh for for and like Andras, that's yep stealth whichever challenge it is. All right, he's got a Lord Renly's ride here, but no gold for Lord Renly's ride. So, um, oh, my my view of the YouTube is currently frozen. Um, let me try refreshing it, seeing if that will do it. We've lost. Have we lost it? It looks like we lost the stream. Oh, nope. Is it live? It's frozen. So we, we see Will searching through his hand right now. Uh, I think it's, is it just my internet? Um, let me check. Uh, it could just be my crappy internet. Let's take a look. Let's refresh it again. Nope, it's still showing Will frozen here. Oh, okay. Oh, is it doing it? It's moving. Okay, they're back. Okay, so uh, somebody died. He uh, lost it. Okay. All right, all right. My internet hiccuped. I apologize. Um, Okay, so that was a good turn for Andras. Uh, very, very good turn for him. Uh, here we go. What are they flipping here? What are they flipping here? Andras. Another, uh, he doesn't want to force March here because he doesn't want to lose Arya. Um, he, hmm, what does he do? What does he do? Will's in a really tough spot, uh, but Ibri is definitely correct that Andras could have won in the previous turn. Uh, and then I apologize, of course, that, uh, the stream quality has gone down a little bit. I'm not sure if that is on the end of uh, the folks in Springfield or if that's just that my internet is hiccuping because it's a little uh, overwhelmed by, by both having to uh, stream this from YouTube and stream it to the world. All right, so what do we see here? We see King in the North versus uh, two military challenge, Storm of Swords. Uh, that's pretty good for for Will, um, but still not that great at the same time. That's two military challenges. That's a lot of pressure on Will when he had just Renly and a uh, and not a lot of economy. So he has six resources available to him. And what what has he got for us? Andras, I believe, chose to go first. Uh, the bodyguard is going to help him a lot. Uh, here that gives him a free save on Renly, but still I don't really see how Will gets back in this game. Uh, I do think that Andras had it locked up as soon as Will did not have an early answer to Wyman, uh, and he may have actually made a pretty critical mistake of Valoring turn three rather than turn two, but of course um, I could be wrong. Uh,
Ward did win this game, uh, Rimok, uh, but I actually think that the game was pretty locked up even without Ward. Uh, just Andras just had way, way too much uh, good stuff here. All right. Um, interesting. Interesting. He just, I guess, Will just wants her for the board and the ability to play the event, which I don't believe he would have been able to um, if she had been ambushed, if the Snapcaster Mage had been ambushed. So we see uh, Summer come out and a Flea Bottom. Okay. And Will's taking a look at the discard pile. I don't think there's anything super interesting in there. There's some Aria dupes a, uh, and the and the Stuart. Okay, doke. Um, what's coming down here? All right. What is coming down? I'm not entirely sure if Will can survive this pressure here. He m no, because he can't defend the military challenge. Uh, thanks to Arya. So at least, oh, and, and there's the stand, so that's two military challenges. That's entirely clearing his board. Excuse me. I mean, it's rough. Excuse me. Rough, rough, rough for Will. Okay, Will swinging in. We don't know if it's intrigue or power. Intrigue or power? Is it frozen again? Right, intrigue or power? Okay, it definitely moved over to Okay, he's gone to uh, Lord Renly's ride and he's gonna kneel, I assume, uh, Arya? Yep, but of course he has a stand, but that does mean that there's t that he doesn't get two military challenges with stealth, so uh, Will can successfully defend the, uh, the second one with, uh, with Renly. All right, and he drew a card. And Will, of course, is pretty comfortable living dangerously here. Uh, there comes that first military challenge. Will will defend it. Draw a card and gain a power. Yep, Andra signals that he, he lost it. And it's the Septon. Will set it up to draw two cards. Good, smooth technical play from Will there. And then we're swinging for Intrigue, most likely. Maybe Power. It doesn't super matter because it comes the block. Andras says go. And oh, he can't trigger it because it's uh, it's oh, and then comes the superior claim, right? Because it's king of the north. I, the 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 um the stand location is off. So, but that puts him in a good spot. What's Andras at? Uh, what is Andras at? I can't quite make it out. Um, I think he, yep. I think he's at something. <laughs> He's at a lot. It's hard to see because uh, the stream quality has dropped significantly for me uh, here. And let's see what's going on. All right, we've got one more plot. Will survived another plot. 
what will Will flip here? I'm not entirely sure. I think I see a Valud O'Harris there. That could be confis. No, that's a confiscation. Uh, confiscation doesn't. Um, confiscation to get the ward might be pretty good. That would definitely soften up the board. So we go into breaking ties and first into ward. That definitely. Um, Helps, but it's still ooh, it's still going to be pretty brutal. He's, I think, Andres is trying to set up for that uh, to make it so that um, he can get that Renly uh, by returning some of the claim soak to Will's hand. Uh, okay, we got there, and we got that, and what's coming out? Ah, Blackfish. Okay. Wow, Andras's deck is super greedy with the wards and a flooded six drop spot. Are we going to next see Mage Mormont too? Wow, big flooded, flooded expensive wards plus, uh, wards plus our good buddy, the Blackfish, Eric Botslav's champ card. And we are now moving into Will's marshalling will is kneeling his rose road for a garden caretaker voted by banter behind the throne as the best reducer character and a okay so will just sort of builds his board up saves a single gold i assume to oh nope to play uh, gates of the moon so no nope, will's not saving any gold he's basically just saying i've rebuilt my board it's going to be hard for you to get unopposed challenges here. Um, but Andras, of course, has a huge power lead. Um, okay, so we're coming in here for... And can, of course, get two challenges with stealth. Uh, Will is still stuck on a single power icon. Um, excuse me, a power icon, military icon. And uh, we are in a bad spot from Will's shoes. He's pushing through here military stealth uh stealth renly yeah will's hand second a lot of gas there yep and will does the concede uh so i think that this game uh was in many ways lost for will on the first turn his inability to have an answer for his opponents uh uh, Wyman, sla Wyman slash Rob on the first turn was really bad. A milk um, would have uh, been just really clutch. Uh, he also may have waited too long to Valor. Um, his board on the second turn was extremely weak uh, and could have probably, he could, I mean, he ended up valoring away all those characters anyway and uh, might have been able to catch his opponent off guard. But of course, his opponent played an economy plot. So maybe. I don't know, maybe holding a different turn so he had a stronger board went into his Valor might have been the right play. Um, but of course, Will's draws were relatively poor. He didn't really see any economy. He didn't really see uh, very many uh, answers to what his opponent is doing uh, because it looks like Will is running a more challenges-focused uh, version of uh, Tyrell Wars. He didn't see left, he didn't see right, uh, or any of the sort of tools that the Tyrell player needs to answer Stark Crossing. And of course, Andras won really or excuse me, saw Drew really well, uh, seeing Wyman and Rob on the first turn, playing Eddard on the second turn. And of course, he could have probably closed on this turn as Stephen Ebry, uh, expert with this deck, uh, did very well fracas with it. Uh, and his good meta mate came in second at Gen Con playing it, uh, pointed out that if he had sequenced his stand and sequenced his challenges properly, he would have been able to make it to 15 in dominance. So uh, this was a pretty good match, um, a pretty high variance one. Uh, but uh, well played by both Will and by Andras. So we are going to be taking yet another break. I will put uh, some music on um, in a little bit and try to see if I can sort out uh, why the stream got a little blurry, whether or not that is my uh, fault or whether or not that is on the side in Missouri. So thank you all for tuning in, and it will probably make many of you happy that I should be joined uh, in the next round by my fellow White Book co-host, uh, Scott Levine, so you don't just have to listen to me drone on. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the low-budget commentary here uh, on my channel, and uh, we'll see you all in a little bit.